Well, I've got some good news for you tonight. I'm not speaking. <laughs> Actually, I am very pleased to be able to introduce our speaker tonight. Um, I've gotten to know Rodney for some time now, and to watch what the Lord is doing in his life is very exciting. And if you had even told me two years ago that I would be introducing Rodney to a stage like this, I'd have said you were crazy. Uh, but the Lord has just done some great work in his life. He's going to share his testimony, and um, uh, this is his second time of being able to speak at a gathering like this. He preached at Moroa Christian Church a couple months ago, did a wonderful job, and uh, so he agreed to come and share that message with you. And uh, I just want everybody to, to know, um, Rodney doesn't have a Bible college education, uh, doesn't have any specialized training. He is simply a man that is open to what God wants him to do in his life. Amen. He was elected as an elder this last year, and I got to tell you, he hit the ground running, and nobody had to tell him what an elder is supposed to do. He's just out there doing it, and he's doing a wonderful job. It is with great pleasure that I can introduce our speaker for tonight, Rodney Theobald. Thank you, Scott. Good evening, men. Before I start, uh, would you please bow with me? Thank you, Father, for giving me this opportunity today to bring this message. Please guide and direct my words today. I pray that everything I say will be pleasing to you and bring honor and glory to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I want to take this moment and thank Pastor Scott for his help and guidance in preparing this message. Like Scott said, this is only my second time giving a message. I do scripture readings and communion meditations at church, and that helps me stand before you this evening. Before I start my message, I would like to say that I went to Little Galilee back in the mid-60s. I was born in 1955, the same year Little Galilee opened. I was so fortunate to have a Christian family that sent me. Back in those days, you didn't have as much peer pressure to take drugs or drink alcohol, at least at such a young age. You didn't have those pressures until you got into high school at least, I didn't see it myself. But now it seems little children are being introduced to drugs and alcohol as young as grade school. It is really sad. That is why church camps, like Little Galilee, are so important. Kids can meet other kids their age and learn about Jesus. It is so important to have camps like Little Galilee, to keep kids focused on Jesus and not on other things. God is so good to use men and women to be in charge of these camps to teach them about Christ. I cherish my experiences at Little Galilee because I was with other kids who also wanted to learn about Jesus. So many kids today give in to peer pressure and get hooked on drugs and alcohol. Thousands are dying of overdoses or drunk driving accidents. It is so very sad. That's why it is important for kids to go to church camps where they can come to know Jesus. I want to thank Gabe and Kevin and the rest of their staff for giving their time and having camp for these kids. 
Since 1955, God has placed people in charge that really care about our young people, camp directors who love the Lord and want our young people to love him too. My message this evening is a little different kind of message. This is a testimonial of how Christ broke the chains of addiction in my life. When I was still in high school, I had my first taste of alcohol. I liked it and I wanted more. It seemed like my attraction to it started to grow. When I started to work at Kroger's in Decatur, all of my friends liked to drink. I started spending time after work at their houses or we went to bars and we always had plenty to drink. Before I knew it, I was in an addiction. Not that anyone else knew it. During those years back in the late 70s through the 90s, I was having fun with my friends from work. When I wasn't at work, I was out drinking with them. We looked like we were having a great time, but down deep inside, I was depressed. I was afraid that if my parents and my grandma found out, they would hate me and not want to be around me. So I hid it from them the best that I could. My brother Kevin and his family were the only ones that knew what I was doing. They tried to get me to stop, but I wouldn't listen. I was afraid they would not want to be around me either. I still had my faith in the Lord, and I knew that he promised never to leave us or forsake us. I knew he was still with me. I also knew that I was disappointing the Lord with what I was doing, but I couldn't stop. Jesus said in John 8, verse 34, I tell you the truth, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. I was a slave to alcohol addiction. I can't even begin to guess how many times I drove home when I couldn't even walk straight. I was like one of those described in Psalm 107, verses 10 and 11. Some sat in darkness and the deepest gloom, prisoners suffering in iron chains, for they had rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. There were two instances when I passed out driving my car. The second was the most serious. I left Decatur one night, heading for Lincoln. When I got to Mount Pulaski, I passed out at the wheel. My car flipped several times and landed on the roof. Once I was removed from the car, I was taken to the emergency room in Lincoln. The policeman who responded to the accident said that if I hadn't been hurt, he would be taking me to jail. The next day, my brother Kevin wanted me to go to the wrecking yard to look at my car. I didn't want to go at first, but I gave in. As we stood there looking at the car, or what was left of it, Kevin looked at me with tears in his eyes, and he said, Rod, you could have died. I said, I know, brother, I could have died. I guess the Lord isn't done with me here on earth. Then in 1990, I got my first DUI. I had to pay fines, attend DUI classes and AA meetings, perform community service, and undergo 18 months of court supervision. Every six months, I had to return to court to make sure that I wasn't drinking or hadn't received any tickets. I had to go before a hearing officer in Springfield to get my license back, and I passed. The worst part, though, was that my parents and my grandma now knew about my problem. I tried to hide it from them because I did not want to hurt them, but there was no hiding it anymore. I had all of my classes and community service completed in the first six months. 
That looked favorable to the judge. After I got my license back, you would think I would have learned my lesson. But I continued to drink heavily nearly every day. And then two days before Christmas, on December 23rd, 2005, I got my second DUI. I had to tell my grandmother, who was living with me at the time, and that was one of the hardest things I ever had to do. I thought my grandma was really going to let me have it, but she never got mad or raised her voice. She just wanted to know how I could get myself into this mess. She said, I thought you were over that drinking. I said, I was sorry, but I was still drinking. We were supposed to go to my aunt and uncle's house in southern Illinois for Christmas. It was very difficult for me to get into the Christmas spirit because all I could think of was the DUI and how it was going to affect our lives. I didn't know how my grandma was going to get to her doctor's appointments or to the grocery store. She was in her 90s. I felt like I had ruined her life. She told me, Rodney, we will get through it with God's help. A few weeks later, Pastor Ron Rector called on us and brought Larry Larson to meet us in our apartment in Moroa. We visited a while and Ron had to leave, but Larry stayed. Grandma told Larry, Rodney has gotten himself into a predicament. She told him what happened and that she would need rides to the store and doctor's appointments. Because of his huge heart and his love for the Lord, Larry told us that was no problem and he would help us out. He took us wherever we needed to go. We knew the Lord had answered prayer by putting Larry in our lives. He even took me to Clinton to take my driving test when I was able to get my license back. Grandma and I thank the Lord every day for putting Larry and his wife Tish in our lives. The laws had become more strict on the offense, and my attorney told me he didn't know if he could keep me from going to jail for an extended time. In the end, I had more fines, more community service, and this time I had 18 months of probation. I had to go before a hearing officer in Springfield again. This time, it wasn't pretty. They knew that it was my second offense, and they had several people there firing questions at me, and they wouldn't even let me get one question answered before they were firing another one, and I got upset. I wasn't prepared, and I was too nervous, and I failed the first time. I did not want to go back a second time, but my friend Larry Larson had a long talk with me and convinced me to go back and try again. The second time, I passed. Now I came to the crossroad of decision. I had hit rock bottom. Like the prodigal son in Luke 15, 17, I came to my senses. I decided I needed God's help because I didn't want to continue drinking and I knew I couldn't do it on my own. It took me a long time to realize my need to strengthen my relationship with the Lord. I came to the conclusion that I could not do this anymore and he was the only one who could help me. So I sat one evening and prayed Please, Lord, help me to break these chains of addiction. And I tell you, fellas, when I got done praying, I knew that he was with me because I felt like I had a thousand pounds lifted off my shoulders. As we read in Psalm 107, 13, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, 
and he saved them from their distress. I could not break the chains myself, but I had to make a decision to turn to the Lord. That decision put me on the path to victory. Like Psalm 107.14 says, He brought them out of darkness in the deepest gloom and broke away their chains. Jesus broke the chains of my addiction, but he used resources and people to help along the way. I was required to attend AA meetings and take DUI classes. These were helpful as it kept me accountable to others and showed me the consequences of my choices to drink and drive. I remember Larry Larson talking to me one day and he said, he said, Rodney, you know, he says, uh, you need an accountability partner. And I said, yeah, I said, who do you have in mind? And he said, me. But he said, I'll tell you this, I won't put up with any drinking or anything. And I said, okay, Larry. So he became my accountability partner. And he told me, he said, if I ever hear that you took a drink or anything, he said, he said, I'm sorry to tell you, but I won't be able to be your friend anymore. And that hurt. The Lord used family and friends to help me. My brother Kevin stood by me. Larry Larson and Pastor Ron Rector helped me, even drove me to appointments and meetings when I could not drive myself. They all encouraged me to stay sober. I can say with Paul in Romans 7, verses 24 and 25, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Brothers in Christ, I stand before you this evening as a changed person. I have been sober for quite a while now, and it feels really good. I'm so happy and blessed with what the Lord has done for me. And the main focus of this message isn't the things that happened to me. The focus of this message is that the Lord was with me every step of the way. He never gave up on me, even with all the bad things that I was doing in my life. He still loved me. Like we read in Psalm 107, verses 15 and 16, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. For he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. Christ broke the chains of addiction and he can break yours too. If any of you this evening feel trapped in your own sin, whatever that sin might be, know that you can be free. Jesus said in John 8, 36, If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Regardless of the sin that has ensnared you, He can break those chains and set you free. If any of you tonight have a friend or family member, or co-worker who is caught in an addiction, pray with them and point them to Jesus. James 5, verses 19 and 20 says, My brothers, if one of you should wander from the truth and someone should bring him back, remember this, whoever turns a sinner from the air of his way will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sins. Before I close in prayer, I would like to conclude that I am a sinner. We are all sinners. Christ brought me out of this addiction and set me on the right path. But I am still a sinner. I have things I struggle with because I'm human. We all have struggles in our lives. But as Christians, we have our faith in Jesus Christ. We know that he is our savior and our rock. If something happens in our lives that we can't handle, we can go to him in prayer, asking him for help and guidance. 
He will be there for us. None of us can do anything on our own. As long as we have Jesus in our lives, we can face anything. I know that I can stay away from alcohol because I go to him in prayer and ask him to give me the strength to fight temptation. Temptation is not a sin, but giving into it is a sin. I thank him continually for being in my life and guiding me every day so I can stay sober. I am where I am today, not because of me, but because of what Christ did in my life. He is the one who broke the chains of my addiction. All of the glory and thanks go to Christ. One last thing before I pray. I struggled a lot of years with this addiction. I know now that all the alcohol I was putting in my body was damaging it. But more than that, it was damaging my relationship with my Lord and Savior. My drinking was keeping me from going to church and Bible studies because I wasn't in the shape to go. I had to get my relationship with the Lord back on track. He knew that I would come around because he is all-knowing. He was waiting for me to come to him for help, and he welcomed me back. And I can tell you, men, after all of those years of alcohol, I was tired. I was tired of waking up in the morning and not knowing who I'd been with the night before, where I'd been, where my car was. I was tired of my hand shaking all the time. And I just was tired. I just had to give it up. Would you please bow with me? Thank you, dear Jesus, for being the center of my life. Thank you for guiding me this evening. I pray that everything I said today will bring honor and glory to you. Thank you for giving me the courage to give this message today. And thank you for Scott giving me this opportunity and helping me construct this message. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. It's not easy to stand up here. It's even more difficult to stand up here and be uh, transparent. So thank you, Rodney, for being transparent with us tonight. Show me your appreciation.